Hey everyone, and welcome to the final part of our four-legged mech design lab. We had a lot of good entries, and you guys all voted and gave some good feedback on those entries. And it seems like it came down to a bit of a three-man race between Jezu, Lewd Ooze, and Ahoy Nato. Now, Jezu and Lewd Ooze both had six great designs on their page, and that probably got their votes spread out a bit among those designs, uh, whereas Ahoy Nato had most of his votes for this design number two. Uh, but anyway, I put the top five voted on designs up there on the left for a little bit, just so you can see what people voted on. And the one we're going to be developing into a more finished illustration is the one by Ahoy Nato. So it's kind of interesting. I'm going to keep all the proportional stuff and basic ideas that he established, uh, but I'm going to mess around with the constructional aspects of it a bit, such as how the legs are constructed and the different body sections are, you know, how they're paneled out and things like that. So for the legs, I decided to go with something more closely related to what um, Lewd Ooze had in his legs. And also I think... Uh, Jezu had some legs similar to this as well, but basically just that uh, double jointed uh, feature with the with the bottom part of the foot kind of coming up, up past the joint. Um, so just that kind of feel to it. It feels more constructed. It feels more mechanical, and I think that should lead to a better design when we're finished. Uh, so you can see my process right now is just kind of doing an oversized thumbnail of what will become the finished design. Um, I started with the legs kind of as a base, similar to how I did my little massage advertisement bods, kind of setting up legs so I have a nice base on which I can design the core body features of the robot. You can see that I double checked my leg perspective with a quick little parallelogram on the ground there just to make sure they look like they're in proper perspective. And now I'm just going to work on some of the body features such as the little nozzle in the front which releases the gas. I guess this makes for a good Good time to go over what the core functionality of our mech is. So we have this glass jar on the back and that holds some kind of nefarious chemical compound and then the rest of the mech functions as some sort of autonomous delivery system that walks around the battlefield and uses the chemical to produce some poisonous gas and, and this is all very believable in a video game setting I could totally picture this as like an enemy um, it even has that built-in weak point of the glass jar on the back and the liquid inside could even glow just so it draws the player's attention to the weak point. But back to our thumbnailing, you can see that I actually made the glass container a lot larger and more prominent on the design. And that's just because it's the main selling point of this concept. So I wanted to make sure it's noticeable and affects the silhouette in an interesting way. And it really feels like it's all about this purpose. Uh, so I'm pretty much done with the thumbnail at this point and you can see I flipped the canvas around and that's just to give me a new perspective on the illustration and help me see if there's any errors in the in the perspective or just things I might want to change. Um, I'm going to blow it up just a little bit since I don't have those little images on the page anymore. I can just put all your focus on the actual illustration. Um, so I think that front leg is bugging me a little bit. It's, it could work, but I just wanted to kind of turn it in a little bit, uh, make it slightly less angled, just to kind of put the balance uh, back farther into the piece instead of being out in front. And at this point, I actually decided that instead of doing painting like I'd normally do, in fact, like I've done in every single uh, design lab and pretty much every video. So instead of the normal painting, I'm just gonna do a line work drawing for this design. And this could be an easier approach for a lot of people who aren't as comfortable with painting. Um, so you can see I just kind of lightened up my silhouette layer a lot and I'm just going to draw on a different layer above that and just kind of fill in line work as I go along. And this is kind of an interesting approach because it's far less focused on values and uh, kind of general tones and shadows and more focused on like the paneling and the details of everything. Uh, so this is where you kind of have to go through once again with everything and figure out where your details are going to be, figure out how everything works. It's a bit more mentally taxing to have to figure out all the, you know, exact details of everything. Uh, but the final result gives you something that feels more polished and complete. 
Um, so anyway, you can see that the main thing I'm focusing on is like paneling lines. And that kind of is a key factor anytime you're doing this kind of stuff, is your paneling lines. You want them to feel a little bit organic, yet still very mechanical. Um, so basically, there's a lot of ways you can take them. You don't have to really do any paneling lines. You can make them real simple with no screws and things like that. Uh, but I think that's where you get a lot of character in your designs. So I try to make my paneling as interesting as I can. And apparently I've waited too long to do the commentary for this video because the bird that lives next to the computer is now awake and making little squeaky sounds and playing with his bell. Uh, so hopefully I can finish this off quickly before the bird becomes fully awake and starts squawking and doing all kinds of annoying stuff. Uh, but anyway... There's no exact method for making interesting paneling. And in fact, the only thing I would recommend is that you don't do it too slowly. And that's a problem that you run into a lot when you're kind of doing these line work pieces over silhouettes. And in fact, that's the problem I feel like I ran into on this particular piece when I started it. Um, I slowly started to pick things up. Um, as I went along, especially as I got into this back leg and kind of mainly the body area. Uh, but as I started out, it was a really slow and uh, on that first leg and especially that lower body. Um, I did it a bit slow and I feel like it's a bit too static, a bit too kind of, I don't know, it, it lacks personality and life. Um, so I probably wasn't that happy with that. And in fact, later on, I actually redo most of that stuff. Uh, but with this like upper body part, I just started kind of zooming out. I didn't zoom in. I decided to, you know, go back to my earlier, you know, view of things. And just kind of do it nice and fast and keep the shapes kind of loose and organic and try to kind of figure out where like the little grooves in the metal could be and where things could panel properly. Um, and knowing how to do like panel type stuff, I, I don't know how to really improve at it, you know, other than studying um, industrial design stuff that actually exists, you know, s study old machines and uh, old vehicles and things like that and uh, try to just make things seem less boxy and uh, less static. So while the lines you're drawing might be very straight and mechanical, it's important to kind of keep a loose and organic feel to how you're making them. Uh, don't really try to calculate things too much, you know, with like straight lines, 45 degree angles and things like that. Just kind of let it flow out naturally and you'll probably create some panels that are more interesting to look at and more original. Because uh, this is kind of where you can take a good design and a good silhouette into being a great design and a great, you know, concept mechanical piece. Right now, I'm just kind of looking over it, and it looks okay. I'm getting rid of my silhouette now, so I can just focus purely on the line art and take a look at things. And uh, the more I looked at it, the more I wasn't happy with certain parts, which just kind of felt uh, like they lacked uh, that right energy, um, such as that little knob on the back of the upper torso. It was like even with our view plane instead of being slightly askewed. Uh, so I just kind of did that. And that whole body area just kind of felt a bit, a bit unnatural, a bit too like segmented into these like even shapes where I want it to feel uh, more flowing and like it's more uh, unique and interesting. And the front legs are largely the same way as as well as that back kind of thigh leg. Um, but I really wanted to redo these just to kind of make them looser and uh, do them without thinking too much. Just kind of bring in some looser designs and shapes. Uh, so I got rid of all the details real fast and just kind of redid them in a really quick way. Um, it's not that they looked terrible, and some of you might even think they looked better before, and I don't know, you know, that's always debatable. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of simplify them a bit, because that's something you really need to watch out for when you get into this paneling stuff. It's, it's making it too complicated and uh, kind of not simplifying where it should be simplified. Um, so I just kind of quickly go through that and put in little like screws and things like that which make it feel very constructed um, and I kind of try to throw those around in mildly appropriate spots and there's a lot of kind of little details in how things are structured that you might notice. 
So anything that feels like it might be a structural weak point, you can go back in and put like those little notches uh, in between like the creases in the metal, just to kind of make things feel more durable. But anyway, let me take a moment to go back and talk a bit about line quality uh, because I didn't really mention it, but uh, you may notice when I'm drawing, there's a lot of control Z, uh, a lot of disappearing lines and reappearing lines. And that's just because of the way I like to do things is to get a nice clean line uh, by doing it in one quick stroke. So you may notice like especially on circles and ellipses and curves. Um, I'm constantly control Zing and redoing the line, uh, just kind of trying to hit it perfectly in that first stroke. Uh, so with like certain circles and you know ellipses, you might see me try them like 20 times, even 50 times, if I'm not getting the line I want. Um, and that's okay. That's kind of it helps me improve the more I do it. Um, and, you know, hopefully the more mechanically sound I get, the less tries it takes for me to hit the line I want to hit. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that because a lot of people do their line work very slowly and uh, you don't get quite the same smoothness and uh, energy in your lines that you get if you just do them quickly in, you know, single strokes. And it also helps you mechanically to get more used to drawing with your arm instead of your wrist, which I've mentioned mentioned a lot more before because uh, you can't hit a long straight line with your wrist um, obviously mechanically you just can't do it quickly with your wrist you'd have to like slowly move your wrist and then move your arm and then move your wrist again um, but it's this just gets you in the habit of working quickly with your whole arm to hit you know every line and every curve and every circle uh, so I think that's about it for the line work. Um, I'm just going to quickly go in and put some base color tones in. Uh, nothing too fancy. I'm not going to do any shading, at least not for the video. I'll probably go back in and do some really basic shading. Uh, but just for the video, I'm just going to lay in some base tones. So I wanted to go with a green uh, for my base uh, metal color. And that's just because that make, gives this a nice kind of World War II-esque style feeling. Uh, that's kind of the green I was going for, uh, where it feels a bit military um, and a bit kind of um, in that style, yet that will contrast the uh, the nature of the machine, which is very futuristic and high tech. Obviously, I could do something more metallic, like silver or black or whatever, but that kind of feels more futuristic. Uh, so when you have this color, this like natural old green color, it kind of contrasts uh, your the actual mech itself and gives you a nice little pop to it. Um, you can also use like bright colors like blues and you know reds and stuff and that gives you a nice contrast as well to the mechanical nature of things. Uh, but I felt like the screen would be appropriate. Uh, so I did my green and now I'm going back in. I did my my silvery colors for like where there are you know metal discs or you know uh, those hydraulics. And then I decided that I'd go back in with this like sandy desert uh, military color and just kind of do some accent colors. Because uh, accent colors are a lot of fun, especially when you have a piece with a lot of panels. Uh, they really let you give it some life and personality. Uh, you might have, you may have seen that like on the uh, on the shiny mech I did, uh, where it had those really pops of red, just to kind of break things up. And I feel like accent colors are a great way just to kind of bring a little life into your piece. And they're also a lot of fun. And this is like where you have the most fun when you're doing something. You know, you've done all the complicated stuff, you've rendered your piece out, and now you can just have fun and experiment with different kind of accent colors and really bring some personality into your mech, which, you know, otherwise it's just a mech with no personality and, you know, it's just kind of boring. But this is really where you get to make it your own. Uh, so for this liquid in the back, I wasn't really sure what to do. I actually tried thinking about doing it like in a bright purple or something like that, uh, but it just took too much attention to it. Uh, so I just went with like a gray color, which feels like death anytime you have like a, a dark gray liquid. That that feels kind of poisonous. Um, obviously purple would also feel poisonous. Green feels very poisonous, uh, but this dark like mercury type color, uh, this also feels kind of like death. So, 
So that creates a nice look to it. And something I sometimes do on my mechs is just add a little, you know, text here and there. And I don't know why. It's just going, maybe it's, you know, getting ready to release gas. Or maybe this is like a mechanical creeper from Minecraft. Uh, but anyway, I actually don't like that yellow light I added. Maybe I'll just go back and do a basic dark uh, sphere there instead of that light source. Because uh, I don't really think that works. Uh, but anyway, I think that's about it for this design, at least for the video. I'll probably go back in and add my shading like I mentioned. Uh, maybe a base like cell shading, maybe slightly blended uh, with maybe a bounced light source, just really gentle on there. Uh, but I think that's it, and hopefully you enjoyed this video, and it was slightly less about painting and slightly more about watching um, line work, which is, you know, harder to talk about. I'm not really sure what to talk about when I'm doing that much line work. Uh, but hopefully it was interesting, and thanks everyone for submitting their artwork. Thanks to Ahoy Nato for having the winning entry, and uh, Ludus and Jezu as well for being right up there, and everyone else that did really great entries, because there were a lot of ways this could have gone, and I was really happy with the entries I saw. Uh, so that's it for now. Be prepared for a whole new type of video coming up next week.